Okay, the next topic is the adjacency list. Well, just now we talked about the adjacency matrix, and the problem is, well, if we have a very sparse graph, and then in the adjacency matrix, and we know there are going to be really a lot of the zeros. And however, and remember, well, this takes the O v square. So O v square is the required memory space to store a adjacency matrix and this can be too much for a sparse graph and for especially for a sparse graph which has really a lot of the vertices. So the next choice we have is adjacency list. So in this case well we have we are using the same the same graph and we have a total of four nodes. In this case for each of the nodes we want to to record what are the edges available from this node to other nodes. So for example, the adjacency list with the index 1, that is how many edges are going out from the node 1. And then in this case, well, from the node 1, we can go to a node 2 and node 3. And for node 2, we can go to node 3. And for node 3, we can go nowhere. And then for node 4, we can go to node 3. OK, so this is the idea of uh, of storing the uh, the graph with an adjacency list. And you, you may feel like this may work better if we have a very sparse uh, a very sparse, sparse graph, okay. And the variation is well, if you want to, uh, if you want to keep a the list of the edges coming into the current vertices, and that it, it can also work that way. So, for example, adjacency list with the index as three that is empty because there's no edges going out from the node three. Right. So if we want to use this kind of variation and then instead of storing what are the edges, go, what, what are the nodes that we can go out to, we can record what are the nodes that we can we have incoming edges. In this case, well, the adjacency uh, list with the index one, that will be empty because there's no nodes going to one. And then for two, and we will have a one there because, well, from one, we can go to two because in this variation, we are recording not outgoing edges, but incoming edges. OK, and then for the three, we will have two, one and four because from two, one and four, we have incoming edges to the node three. So this is a possible variation, but we don't use that a lot. OK, and the next topic we want to say is the degree. So the degree of a vertex is the number of the edges. So we are counting the number of the edges. Well, it depends on if you're doing a directed graph or a undirected graph. So if you're doing a directed graph, and then we, we have to count the in degree and the out degree. However, if you're doing a undirected graph and we don't need to bother to count to differentiate the in degree or the out degree, and we simply say the degree of a vertex v. So let me go to example here. So if you're using a directed graph, so if you're picking the two, for example, so for the out degree of the two, so out degree of the two, that is how many outgoing edges. So all the out degree 2 of the 2 is a 1 and the in degree 2 is a 0 okay and how about 4 so for the 4 there are three incoming edges so for the in degree of the 4 that is a 3 and for the odd degree that is a 0 right so let's come back to this point so for a directed graph the number of the items uh, the number of the uh, uh, adjacency list is the total number of the odd degree, which is E. So why? So in oops. So in this case, how many edges are we recording? We are recording only one, two, three, right? We are only recording three edges in this case. So that is for the adjacent one we will have 
a four and then for the for the a d j two we have a four for the a a d j three we have a four and then for the a d j four we have nothing okay so in this case we are creating a total of four slots because we have four nodes or four vertex vertices and then we are only recording three values because there are only a total of three edges in this case so the number of the edges and then the number of the vertices and that is all we need to store a directed graph right so in this case we are recording say uh, uh, we are creating a total of four slots and then uh, on those four slots we are only storing a total of three values because four is the number of the nodes and the three is the number of the edges okay so let's see another one so how about the undirected graph so for the undirected graph and we will have the a d j one as a four and the a d j two is a four as well because two one is connected to four two is connected to four and then for the a d j three it's a four again but how about the a d j four for the adj4 four, 4 is connected to 2 1 and 3 and because that is a undirected graph and then it will be a list of 1 2 and 3 in this case right so this is an undirected graph so how many nodes are we storing we are storing 4 so for the adjacent list there are a total of 4 slots again and then how many values are we storing in total and then we are counting six right because for each of the edge if we can go from one to four so from one to four and then from four we can also go to one so for each each of the edge we are going to count that twice so that is the reason that we have a total of six edges counted here but anyhow the uh, sigma the total number of the edges should be the 2e because we are doing hand shakings okay but that is still a sigma of the v plus e storage so putting this information together it doesn't matter if we are storing a uh, a uh, a directed graph or undirected graph the memory cost of storing a adjacency list should be o v plus e okay so the next task we want to talk about is to do a graph searching well and for this search and we have multiple goals and well they we can accomplish all of them together so we are given a graph that is the g and that is a collection of the vertices and plus a collection of the edges and well it doesn't matter is it directed or undirected okay and our goal is we want to explore all the vertices and all the edges and ultimately we also want to build a tree based on this graph so we pick a vertex as a root and then we want to uh, we want to change the certain edges well to produce a tree so well for the entire graph we are only picking part of the edges to build a tree structure and in some of the cases if not all the vertices are connected and then it is not really possible to build one single tree and in this case we may have to build a forest so when we are trying uh, the strategy of exploring a graph and turning that into a tree and the strategy will be well we only visit one vertex at one time 
and then based on the current vertex we are visiting and then we are trying to expand the frontier of the explored vertices and then across the breadth of the frontier okay so we are doing a breadth first search so we are expanding the frontier of the of the explored area uh, across the breadth of the frontier okay so build a tree over a graph so we have to pick a source vertex and that will be the root so we are specifying which root we are going to take as the root so when we are doing the breeze first search and the strategy is we want to again associate each of the vertex with a color so the definition of this algorithm is if we are coloring a vertex to be white and then it is just an un unvisited node yet okay so and to start this algorithm and all the vertices are are white are colored to be white and then for the gray vertices and they are discovered vertices but yet they are not fully explored yet and then after we have fully explored a vertex and then we will color that into black okay so well we are gonna continue the code in the next video